Have you ever tried to start a new craft or activity and the first place you run to is YouTube to look at video tutorials? And does that ever make you wonder how people in the past used to learn crafts if they didn't know someone directly in their life that could teach them? I've also had the question of how effective were those tutorials back then? Because I have been able to look through a lot of antique and vintage knitting and crocheting books and one of the sections that's always a part of it is a very brief introduction on learning how to knit and crochet and i always wondered is it possible to actually learn a new craft with the instructions that are given it's hard for me to do because i already know how to knit and crochet however i thought why not try to learn a new craft with one of the antique instruction books that i have this is weldon's practical needlework this one in particular is volume four and it's from i believe the late victorian era what's exciting about volume four is that in it we have volume one or the first series of their tatting booklet and usually the first series includes all of the how-to instructions on how to do that particular craft. <laughs> I have never tatted before in my life, so we are today going to together see how easy slash difficult it is for me to learn how to tat given the instructions in this antique <laughs> tatting booklet. Let's see how I do. <laughs> Requisites for tatting. A shuttle, ring and pin. I mean, I do have a crochet hook if I need it. I can grab it. A shuttle three to three and a half inches long should be right. Uh, I don't know how long this is. And then crochet cotton is most generally employed. It should be soft yet strong. Method of working. Okay, so we have some diagrams as well. First is termed a double stitch. See figure seven. Okay. This double stitch is employed almost entirely in modern tatting. The chief difficulty experienced by beginner is the proper drawing up of the shell thread. To one not accustomed to the work, it will appear that it should be a referral. This is the chart made that it was only It holds with the air of the foot and the and from the other. I know I'm reading words, but it's just not really registering. The first operation in commencing tatting. Okay, this is where we start. Is to fill the shuttle. Okay, so here I have my shuttle. Now we have to fill it. And then it says to wind the shuttle. Clockwise, counterclockwise, doesn't say. I'm gonna be back in a second after I finish winding all of this. My shuttle is loaded. Now hold the shuttle between the thumb and first finger of the right hand as in figure one, okay? So like this. Take the cotton between the thumb and finger of the left hand. Okay, so it looks like the thread passes through this, take the cotton between the thumb and finger of the left hand, passing around the back of the hand with about five inches of the, of the hand, and hand hanging down against the, the palm of the hand. Hand by the second knuckle. Okay, wait. Oh. Like this. Draw the shuttle up, pull it tight to the right with a jerk, and at the same time, raise the second finger of the left hand within the loop to stretch and raise up the thread. Follow like this, and then should it go like, do I have a single stitch? Oh no, I don't think the right one is looped. Let's try that one more time. Through here, like that. This, okay, I think that's one single stitch. Yeah, look, I think that's one single stitch. Now the question is, how do I get more than one? <sighs> to be honest, I'm still quite lost. I'm doing it. Look, I think those are three single stitches. Let's see if I can get to six. Nope. <laughs> Stopped at three. I'm gonna try to get to six. Here we go. I just got to six, and I feel like the tension of both of the threads are really, really important. So now it says we want to do a double stitch. I got a little double stitch. Oh, this is tiny. I made my first double stitch. I'm going to continue practicing some double stitches to make sure that I can kind of get them a little bit consistently. I'm looking through the rest of the instructions right now just to see what else there is. So there's another way to work double stitch. I 
am kind of afraid that if I look at another way to do it, I'm gonna forget the first way to do it. They don't even have any illustrations for it. I'm reading through it now and it's just very confusing to me. So I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, here we go. I think this is going to be my first kind of edging that I can make, which is detached scallops of double stitches. So it's just gonna be scallops of double stitches and it looks very cute. I made my first little scallop of nine. And then it says to just keep going. All right, I'm gonna see how far of an edging I can get and maybe I will try a different pattern as well. Oh no. <laughs> I tried to make the second pico and I ended up with uh, this mess, which is not right at all. And so I'm gonna cut this all off. I'm gonna start again. I am impatient. I want to make pretty things. <laughs> Finish the second set of nine. The loop is on my finger. I'm gonna drop it now and see if I can correctly pull this loop into the scallop. Cause last time this didn't work. So what if I just hold it like this and pull? I feel like this is not gonna work. No, oh, something's going wrong here. Oh gosh, wait, did I do it? Oh, I just pulled with all of my might. I feel like that's not right though. I technically got my second scallop. Uh, it's a little far away from the first. Let's see if I can do a few more. All right, this is my third attempt at a scallop. That's promising. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. I now have my first tiny mini tatted edging, and I think so far the key has been relax and loosen up my tension. I tend to hold things very, very tight. Same thing when I first learned how to knit. I used to make my needles squeak because my tension was so high, so I just kind of have to relax my hand a little bit. So yesterday you'll have seen me struggling quite a bit with the tatting supplies. Um, it got a little dark, so it was hard for me to show you all the progress I made yesterday. I switched over to the tiny, tiny crochet thread, and that one just turned into one big knot, just a huge tangle. But for whatever reason, after I struggled with that one for a little bit, when I switched back to the number 10 crochet thread, something just clicked for me. And I ended up being able to create quite a few sample edgings and borders. I had a few false starts, which I had to abandon. Um, but now I am starting on my first doily. And so far it's looking really, really good. I will show you as I keep on making progress in tatting, but uh, so far I think I've, I've been doing pretty okay. In the beginning, it just felt really frustrating because it just felt like everything was knotting up. It also made me realize that knitting, crocheting, tatting, they're all knots. They're all very elaborate, purposeful knots that are end up being useful and a lot of times very pretty. So this is just one big drawn out knot. The sweater that I knit that I'm wearing right now is just one big knot, but it's a more purposeful knot than the tangles I was creating yesterday. I'm going to continue. I have, I think seven of 12 circles done for the center of this doily. And then I have a few more edges. Hello and welcome back home. It has been a few weeks since I've updated you on my tatting adventures. I am back home now and I've done quite a bit of tatting on my own time. The last thing that you saw, I believe, was me working on this doily and I had just partially finished this inner round of the doily. Since then, I have finished the full outer round and there is only one round left to finish the rest of this doily. At the time, I was only talking about one doily, but I got distracted kind of by the beautiful designs and it caused me, of course, to bite off maybe more than I can chew, as I usually do. I started on the square doily. I am just beginning my first round here on the square one. <laughs> and then on top of that, I was also wondering how transferable are the skills that I learned from the Victorian book. And I found a 1940s tatting pattern and I began on that doily as well. <laughs> All of these doilies that I'm tatting are going to be going to my patrons as part of their gifts. I really, I'm very excited to send them off to the recipients. I really hope that they enjoy them. I can't wait to continue making more. I find it a really nice, small, compact 
project to bring with me. From here on out, I am going to be finishing up the original Victorian doily that I showed you. I am hoping to also show you uh, wrapping up the other two doilies as well. As I'm so close to finishing this doily, I think I'm gonna go grab the pattern, sit down with the book and finish this one up so we can see it in its fully finished state versus the picture in the pattern. I believe I am completely done with learning how to tat from an over 100 and something year old instruction book. I will say though that there are a few things that I feel like I had to guess at just because it didn't have it in the instructions anywhere and so I did my best and I really wanted to stick to using only this book as my guide. So for example, joining in a new piece of thread and I didn't really understand the structure of tatting all that well because it just unraveled, things came apart. It wasn't a very sturdy join. So what I'm going to do is look up some tatting instructional videos and I wanna see how close my guesses were. I'm most interested in their suggested method of holding the thread and throwing the different stitches. So I pulled up the most popular video about tatting that seems to be instructional. So I'm going to look and see how close I was to doing it the way that is suggested here. Slide under your hand thread and over your hand thread. I'm amazed at the way that she just tied that knot. What is amazing to me is for me, when I'm doing my stitches, I kind of have to shift the way the shuttle goes through the thread to form the knot. With this one, the shuttle just stays. It's just such an easy and fast movement. Tighten your shuttle so that that knot flips. Yeah. Away from you, over, under. Oh my gosh. And there's your slip knot. This is like blowing my mind. That's a, such a beautiful movement with your right hand. For me, it feels very awkward the way that I was doing it. I'm gonna see if I can do it the way that they've mentioned. So basically, I'm gonna show you how, how I do it and how I learned. So my knots, I hold it very similarly, except I go through this way. And then you see how I'm, the shuttle has to kind of change its direction and how much movement I have to do with my right hand around my left in order to get these stitches to form. I'm going to see if I can learn from this video how she does it. Towards me, under, over, amazing. Away from me, over, under. Uh, th that second stitch is harder for me. That's so nice. I continued tatting the rest of my doilies using this new method and I enjoyed it very much. I am now finished with the main center portion of the square doily. I really like how it turned out. I had to change the pattern just a little bit to stretch out this fill stitch between the square medallions because I think I miscounted some stitches in the middle, but that's okay because it lays flat and I think it still looks really pretty. Based on the size of this already and how big the border is on the illustration, I think that this is going to be a little bit too large for me to be able to ship it flat. I'm going to take inspiration from one of the other doilies in here and I'm going to add the trefoil edging all the way around this square medallion and then I think the second doily is done. And then I'll move on to finishing off the last doily. I have learned a new fiber craft of tatting, a very ancient craft as I've learned, which is also really fascinating. I love getting into more of it. Just all the different ways of tying threads into wonderful knots. <laughs> It 
It's a few days later now and I have finished three doilies. The original small doily from the 1890s pattern, I believe. I think it's 1890s, maybe 1880s. The square doily with a few modifications to make the size fit a little bit better. Finally, the 1940s doily that I modified from a larger one just to get the centerpiece that I thought looked really beautiful. I can't wait to send these off to their new homes, but before I do so, I want to starch these. I looked at my cabinets. I usually make my own starch from cornstarch and I don't have any. So instead today I'm gonna to try a slightly different method of boiling my rice to make a rice-based starch to starch these lovely doilies. And then I will give you some final thoughts on learning tatting with 120 plus year old instructions versus maybe using a video method to do it as we do today. <laughs> Wrapping up on this fun experiment, I think it's safe to say that it is possible to learn a new craft from just written instructions. However, I think I would highly prefer to use the more modern methods of just looking up videos on YouTube. I think you have a few advantages with that is that you can see different ways of doing the same thing. You can argue that maybe at the time they would have had more first person examples of people doing the tatting or the craft themselves. But if that were the case, I would think that you would learn from that person rather than having to kind of rely on a text to learn it from. So maybe you don't have that many real life in-person examples that you can study from and learn from. So you have the text only. I believe that tatting is going to become a regular part of my fiber crafts. Thank you so much for joining me as I learned the art of tatting <laughs> this week. If you are interested in historical fiber crafts, fiber arts, sewing, those kinds of things in general, please feel free to subscribe because I will be coming out with more videos in the future that go over crafts like these, an 1890s Victorian biking ensemble, and many more things. In the meantime, there are a few other videos that I think that you might enjoy and I will see you again very soon.